The PWBA returns to Terre Haute, Indiana for the eighth straight season. Welcome inside Terre Haute Bowling Center for the finals of the Greater Terre Haute Open. Today's competition begins with last week's runner-up, Carolyn Doran Ballard, taking on Triple Crown champion Dee Dee Davidson. The winner of that match will then face seven-time titleist Marianne DeRupo. The victor there moves on to meet the 97 Rookie of the Year, Lisa Bishop, and the winner of that match earns the right to challenge top seed Tiffany Stanbro for the title. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for joining us. I promised you last week that we'd keep you updated on the status of the tour. As of this broadcast, the future is still uncertain, but positive discussions are underway and we hope to give you a significant announcement in next week's telecast. Right now, let's get to the business here in Terre Haute. Working with me is PWBA champ Kathy Doran Lizzy. Kathy, Lisa Bishop left her home state of Michigan last week very disappointed, but luckily she was coming to a place with a fond memory. Well, Lisa is one of two hot hands on the ladies tour right now, finishing fourth in our WIB Queens and just missing last week's U.S. Open telecast by 82 pins in her hometown. Yes, she was disappointed, but not enough to keep her from coming back to Terre Haute where she won her first title back in 1997 and to qualify second for today's show. Jan, she will not leave here today without title number five. Well, I think our top seed Tiffany Stambro might have something to say about that. She's a 99 Rookie of the Year and Kathy, what a finish last year winning two of the last three events. What did that do for her? Well, winning gave Tiffany a new confidence and a looser arm swing, and that is why she is today's tournament leader. But last week's Kelly Kulik and this week's Tiffany are the future of women's professional bowling. Young, talented, enthusiastic ladies who will stop at nothing to achieve greatness on the lanes. Tiffany finished second here last year, but she won the last time she was our top seed. Well, we'll have to wait to see what the future holds for Tiffany. So right now, let's begin with our tour's two past champions, Carolyn Doran Ballard and Dee Dee Davidson. Thanks, Kathy, and we're ready for the opening match. Dee Dee Davidson will start the match. She's the number four seed. It was her, her choice whether to start or to go second. Apparently, she wants to finish the game on lane 20. She'll begin it on lane 19. Dee Dee taking a moment to step on the approach. Thirty-six years old. 19 years on tour, but she's been plagued by injuries recently, of some back injuries. And not the best opening shot, leaving a washout, a 1-3-7. Washout is determined when there's a gap between the pins and the head pin is still standing. We call it a washout. She's going to take her spare ball and actually try to hit the right side of the head pin on this one and deflect the head pin over into the seven. Oh, and that's exactly how she wanted to do it, Kathy. Just wrapped it around the seven again. And that's just a bad break because she threw exactly the way she should have. Picked up her plastic ball, tried to hit the one three to get the head pin to hit the seven pin. That was just a bad break. That was a great shot. First look at Carolyn Doran Ballard. She was the runner-up last week. Was top seed at the U.S. Open and lost. And there's Is a match on her. Yes, oh my. My. Just clear in time. Well, that was a definitely a better opening shot today than it was a week ago. Remember, all the ladies, no one ever really had a, a very good opening shot. So she's going to go up and at them. And here we get the slow messenger. Thank God the racks aren't quick. Mm -hmm. She gets the 10-pin for the opening strike. Now, had that rack that was coming down touched any part of that pin, the pin would have had to be respotted, and she would have had to have shot the spare. <laughs> Trying to jump right on that open from Dee Dee Davidson with a double. Great opening shots. She looks pretty good today, Jan. You know, she, well, we talked to her about last week's performance, and she finished second after leading such an, an important event like the U.S. Open. She said, I wasn't disappointed at all. I didn't really like what I saw from the other girls that bowled. Kelly had the best shot, and she was really satisfied because the best bowler did win. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> oh, you must be kidding me. Well, Dee Dee throws an awesome ball. I mean, she has revs and powers. You can see how the ball cuts right through the rack, but leaves the 7-10. Unfortunately, two frames in a row. Bad breaks for Dee Dee. 
Well, she just said to the audience, don't worry, everything will be okay. Good thing there's 10 frames to a game. It's important to get the one pin, because as we've seen in the first game, it always comes down to good count in the 10th frame. Last week, we saw our, our uh, opening match have a tie between Kelly Kulik and Leanne Barrett had to go into a ninth and 10th frame roll-off. So you're right, one pin can count any time. Dee Davidson now on two opens, trailing by 32 pins. We'll try and get things going. There we go, better. You heard Dee Dee. She said that was better, so she let it go. The bowler always knows the minute we release the ball, if it's going to be a good shot or not, depending on the, regardless of the result. Well, Dee Dee told us last night that the carry was really bad for her in the morning before a lot of carry down happened. So this may be the 7-10 and the 7-pin may be a sign of what the morning was like. Conditions this week, the surface was wood, volume of oil 24.48 milliliters, length of oil 39 feet, and the type of oil is New Prodigy, which is a combination of the, the best characteristics from offense oil and defense oil. Come on, come on! Yes. Lauren Mallard definitely has a good look out there. She throws the first three strikes. Carolyn takes a five-step delivery. She slides her first step, pushes off in the second. Right here is where you want to see perfect form going into the slide. Going into the slide, the ball is now coming down. Perfect timing. She's, she has a hair late timing, but it's great. It's great timing. That's the result of good timing. And she's sporting a new, a new outfit here. We, uh, PWBA has relaxed the dress rules for competition, and they can wear slacks or capris or whatever they choose to wear. Yeah. Or crop pants, and the girls seem to be more happy with it. Everyone's more relaxed, and it looks nice. It's fashionable. Coming up light there, leaving the 2-4-5, and Kathy looks like she'll throw her spare ball at it. What's the rule of thumb for the pros? Well, Carolyn is a big fan of the plastic ball. Uh, Plastic ball goes 60 feet. You always know where it's going to go because it's going to go where you throw it. So I always recommend every week to get a plastic ball and shoot all your spares. With the plastic oh. ball. I probably shot at 100 of them. Except you double your spares, which we said in the past, the ball needs to generate a little more power, which would be your strike ball. She said she only shot at 100 of them. I guess that was a popular beat. I think I shot at 150. Carrie was very hard this week. TV appearance in 2003. It's actually her first since November of 2001 when she had her last victory in Las Cruces, New Mexico. Unbelievable. Those are really, really nice quality shots. And she's leaving the seven pin, and this is exactly what she had referenced to us. Well, she also referenced that she wasn't a big fan of the sport condition, but it was because she couldn't figure it out. She obviously figured it out this week because. She qualified fourth, and she bowled phenomenal. I told you she hadn't made a show since November 2009, and she talked to Kathy about her absence from the show the last couple of years. You know, I've been through a lot of uh, problems with my back, and um, kind of lost a lot of confidence uh, in the last year and a half, trying to build up my back and get stronger so I can come back out here, because I don't feel that I'm dead yet, and uh, this is a proof right here that I'm back on the show and uh, willing to uh, try again for another title, make it number nine. Okay, she has a few matches to win to make it number nine. At least she's been in the pocket three shots in a row, and going high, leaving me two, four. Well, that wasn't a very good shot, but she knew it because she said sit a bit. So she knew she pulled it, and there's no hold in the middle of the lane, which means there's not enough oil buildup in the middle of the lane for the ball to hold on poor shots such as that one. Carolyn Doran Ballard leads by 42 pins. We'll be back with more from Terre Haute in just a moment. We're mid 
midway through this opening match of the Greater Terre Haute Open. Carolyn Doran Ballard up by 42 pins as she steps up in the fifth frame. She's working on a spare. The only spare she's had. Three strikes prior to that. Come on. Come on. Yes. Oh, she's just overly confident. She has been for what, Jane? Four or five years now? Six years? It's hard to not be confident when you know what your ball's going to do and you know what you're capable of. She's had such tremendous, tremendous success, especially with that huge year in 2001. That it does help. Moves you forward. 206 average this week. Average is a little bit lower. And you do get the breaks. Tish Johnson, unfortunately, needed to mark last night in the 10th frame of position round to make the show, and she chopped a spare in order for Carolyn to make it. But we say happy birthday to Tish. Yes, today's her birthday. Come on. We're looking forward to her having a show for her birthday. Carolyn's making the most of the opportunity she received. And she leads now by 52 pins. Dee Dee Davidson, when she, you know, she's missed several events because of that back injury, and she came back out and asked her sponsors would they still sponsor her, and they are, and wants to thank them, Dan and Juan, to do it. They've been sponsoring her for most of her career. a little better than right this one, although she gets great roll. It enters the pocket a little late. She al almost leaves the 7-9 <laughs> split. But actually, the two 7-pin shots, I thought, were better. They so were. So that just goes to show you how the carry is and your entry of angle into the pocket is very important. Okay, as she trails still by 52, let's see if she can capitalize on that strike. Six pin. Desperate. Well, Dee Dee said her strength this week was a loose arm swing, but that her weakness was costly shots. She lost a lot of games in match play due to one bad shot every game. And the match play points really make a difference. Dee <laughs> told us she was looking for title number nine. Here's a look at what everyone else has. Dee Dee, as I mentioned, currently with eight. Carolyn looking for that 20th title this week. And on down the line, Tiffany with those two. Those were her only two at the end of last season. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Wow. That was an interesting carry. She said, go ahead. A little light. using a ball that isn't very strong. It gets down the lane and recovers. She's playing very straight up the track. So when you see the ball hit like that, sometimes you wonder how it struck. During the week, she only had a 182 average on this pair, but now leads by 62 pins and is on pace if she'd strike out to shoot two. Up, up, up. Now that was a great shot, and she left the 10 pin. Well, she told us that her strength was that she didn't try to find a ball that struck. She just tried to keep the ball in play. And on weeks when they're low, lower scoring, Kathy, is that your recommendation? Absolutely. Stay in the pocket, stay safe, try to only leave nine. You can spare a single pin. Because if you look around, the scores are low. It's because everyone's just trying to stay safe. Don't always try to shoot 250 because you'll shoot 150. No, Dee Dee wanted us to say hello to her mom, Lori just, Lori just out of the hospital, and she wanted to wish her well and tell her she wishes she could be here or Dee Dee could be there, one or the other, but she'd like to be with her. We miss her, too. Hook up, hook up. Phenomenal shot by Dee Dee. That was the passage right there on that shot. Timing was good. She has a, every once in a while her timing gets off and she gets fast feet, which is very common. And she pulls through her shots, but that was picture perfect. Well, Dee Dee is two and four career-wise on television against Carolyn Dorn Ballard. She only averaged 203 against her. Right now, the best she could shoot is 205. Carolyn Dorn Ballard could shoot 256. That's if they both strike out. Hook up, hook up. Come on. She's making Today's not the day. Good shots, and she's right. Today is not the day. 
Bummer, bummer. And that's unfortunate because one thing we all hope to do when you're on TV is you always want to just make a good showing. You want to perform well, and she did that. And she's not getting rewarded for it. See, during the week she beat her, but today's another yeah, day. She's really made, you know, she's only made two shots at Warren in the pocket the entire match. and doesn't even have a double to show for it. Well, this lady with two three baggers throughout this game now working on a spare. She steps up in the line. In week 10, and I want to quickly, she wanted to wish uh, Dell, her husband's father, wish him well. And uh, he's been a little under the She was high Dell Sr. and Francis and Camden and Brianna. And of course, her chiropractor that keeps her in good shape, Dr. Allison Cohen. <laughs> She's been getting quite a good part of the last couple of weeks. Yeah, yeah. She did, and she wanted to say a big thank you to Dr. Scott Matoshko from last week in Detroit. This is not the widest she pulled a muscle in her been. shoulder, and he took her in, and he gave her some therapy on it and stretched her out, and she said that was huge for her to continue to go as well as she did to make that U.S. Open show, so thank you to him also. a good shot right now. Yes, she does. See what happens when some of the other right-handers get out there and play on the same area where she is. You can see, too, even though she knows she has the match one, she's switching balls to try something new in case the ball she's throwing stops working. <laughs> Carolyn Doran Ballard grabs the first match over Dee Dee Davidson. That's to advance, but first when we come back, meet the 2003 class. Welcome back to the Terre Haute Bowling Center. I'm Jan Schmidt along with Kathy Doran Lizzie. No doubt both of the ladies you just saw it with a final score of Carolyn Doran Ballard's 235 to Dee Dee Davidson's 174. As I was saying, no doubt both of those ladies will one day be in the WIBC Hall of Fame, but for now, let's meet the class of 2003 in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. One of the highest honors a female bowler can achieve is induction into the Women's International Bowling Congress Hall of Fame. The 2003 class that was recently inducted includes WIBC immediate past president and life member Joyce Deitch of Las Vegas and former WIBC member emerita Bernice Benny of Forest Heights, Maryland for meritorious service. Plus, former Team USA member and professional bowler Linda Kelly of Dayton, Ohio, for superior performance. Deitch has been intimately involved in nearly every aspect of the bowling administration and leadership for more than 50 years. In 1973, she was elected to the WIBC Board of Directors, where she served in various capacities, including nine years as WIBC president until her retirement in 2002. Among her many honors, Joyce recently received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Bowling Proprietors Association of America. Bernice Benny's involvement in bowling in the 1940s led to the founding of the Washington, D.C. area WBA, where she served an extended term as secretary. Benny was also a founder of the Virginia State WBA and remained instrumental in the growth of both organizations. In 1963, she began a 15-year stint on the WIBC Board of Directors and was named a WIBC Member Emerita in 1979. Linda Kelly was first selected for Team USA in 1988, the year she won the AMF World Cup in Guadalajara, Mexico. She went on to make her presence known at the 1990 Olympic Festival, bringing home a gold, a silver, and two bronze medals. That same year, she joined the Professional Women's Bowling Association, where she now holds one national and multiple regional titles. At the national level, Kelly has amassed several amateur titles, including three WIBC Classic Division Team Championships and a doubles title. In 1987, Kelly became the third woman in history to bowl a perfect game in the WIBC Championship Tournament. The PWBA and the WIBC congratulate these three outstanding ladies. As always, we have a WIBC national representative, Rilla Yader, one of the vice presidents, and the Greater Terre Haute Women's Bowling Association also helped out this week. 
We'll be coming right back with match number two. Carolyn Gorin Ballard will advance and she'll take on Marianne DeRupo. Stay with us. State Sycamores. Larry Bird on hand watching the bowling. Marianne, good luck. We have the Battle of the New Jerseyans here, Jan. We do. Carolyn now living in Texas, but originally from New Jersey. Along with you. Yes. And many others. Marianne is, is still residing there, I believe. Oh, oh, and that's a leave hmm. we saw many of this week. The 4-9, the ball comes up high in the pocket. Normally just leaving either the 4-pin or the 9-pin. This week we saw quite a few 4-9s. She'll take her plastic ball. She'll try to get it to the left of the 4-pin, slide it into the 9. I have seen her make many of these. This is a spare picked up. This is a, a make of yes. Yeah. Give it a little bit of a run there. She actually, but you want to be careful that you still get the wood. So yes, you, you always want to get the wood. Marianne is dedicating this performance to her mom, Rosemary DeRupo, who had cervical neck surgery. And we all wish her a speedy recovery. She's normally out here rooting Marianne on. So we wish her well. Yes, we do. Now you can see Marion has a beautiful style, four-step delivery, but she's playing way inside. She did most of the week. Beautiful timing going into the slide. Strong release. Beautiful entry of angle into the pocket. She'll blow the pins around going right to left. Leaving the three, six, ten. Kathy, we talked with Marianne. She she talked about you know, she was farther left in comparison to other of the other athletes than she normally would be. And she struggled the first morning round. She was 65 under. She learned a lot from that, and she said her weakness this week was not moving right when she really should have. For instance, where Carolyn is playing. Carolyn moved right and got a weaker ball. Marianne is playing deeper inside with a stronger ball. But that may work for her today but she has to keep her eye on that if that starts to not work she needs to trust herself and move right and jump right where carolyn's at because as we saw in the first match carolyn doran ballard had a really good shot where she was at come on and i don't yes. see that changing anytime soon when i spoke to carolyn during the break she said i did exactly today what i did against tish last night in position round I moved right instead of moving left, and I pulled out a weaker ball and just played the track. Because she also told us she didn't do well in the morning, wasn't comfortable with the morning conditions as much. In fact, all of the ladies this week stated that. Yes, and we all saw the same thing, what Marianne just did. Dead flush, and then she goes up high. You have to really make good shots in this condition regardless of where you're playing. Series tied 1-1, one, one. who will gain the upper hand in being crowned this year's NBA champs? Watch Sunday night as Jason Kidd, Kenyon Martin, and the Nets battle league MVP Tim Duncan and the Spurs in a crucial Game 3 matchup that's Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern for the NBA Finals on ABC Sports Championship Television. And Rupo now up in the third. She leads by just one pin. And almost a 7-10, and that's, you know, Dee Dee left one. Carolyn almost left one, ended up striking the first match on lane 20. Seems to be something we're seeing. Well, Marion went high on 19, and Carolyn 4-9 on 19. So I would say 20 is a little tighter. 19 has a little bit more of a hook spot. Marion, another fan of the plastic ball. She's a great spare shooter. It's interesting to see. We saw this last week. Kelly Kulu playing California. Remember West Coast to East Coast? We see another example of that again today. So it's very interesting. Every girl plays the lanes according to the way they feel they have to for their game. But they all make TV. 
doing something different. Mary Ann is also a, a well-versed athlete. She has played many sports, including semi-pro uh, softball during her career and uh, field hockey, most of the sports. She was a well-rounded athlete. Well, that was beautiful. She's not only a great athlete, Jan, but she knows physical therapy. She's done a lot, in, a lot of taping of the joints for many of us mm -hmm. girls out here, and it's very handy to have someone with that type of knowledge in a professional organization. Carolyn working on two in a row. You heard Carolyn, hook a lot, hook a lot. That one, she fell out of that one. She didn't follow through, it looked like her timing was a little late. And there's that two, four, five that she mentioned she shot about 100 of this week. Well, this is her second one, so it's 102 <laughs> and counting. She defeated Mary Ann by quite a bit, 242 to 160 earlier in the week. Oh, hard way, hard way. Ah, Carolyn. Shop that spare. She did the right thing. She threw a plastic ball at it, which she wouldn't do anything different. But the 245 is an odd spare. You have to hit it just right. She hit it too too much on the two pin and got the two four, leaving the five pin. So she now trails by 15 pins after that open frame. Oh, much better shot. Good shot. Good comeback. Come on now. As soon as she gets sloppy. So Mary Ender Rupo is out in front. Her four and a half frames oh, by 15 did. pins. We'll return with more action after these messages. We're back and still midway through the second match. Right now, Mary Ender Rupo up by 15 pins as she steps up in the fifth. If she strikes here, she'll be up by 25. when the front part of the lane seems to hook a whole lot. So that adds in my game since I have a tendency of throwing the ball pretty hard. A little bit of hook never hurts somebody who throws it kind of hard. She's absolutely right. She's always had great ball speed, which was, it's definitely a positive for her game. That's also why she could, I'm sorry, Jan. That's also why she could play so far in when they start to hook because she has the ball speed to get the ball In fact, Marianne had talked about it, that her weakness was that she didn't move right when she needed to during the week. Exactly. But on a pair like this, where your opponent has already two opens by the sixth frame, staying clean and being safe may be the key for Marianne to just advance. So making a drastic move probably isn't the correct thing to do. And she's doing the right thing. She's staying where she's at. Great shot. Whoa, so just checking. <laughs> talked about how tight it was toward the end of the position round and Carl Honeychurch and Tish Johnson battling it out for that fifth spot along with Carolyn Car ending up in sixth, Tish in seventh, both opening in the tenth frame. There's our reigning bowler of the year, Leanne Barrett. Paul and Brenda Norman, our defending champion here in 11th. Michelle Feldman, our player of the year in 12th. Carol Giannotti Block, who I think is throwing the ball better than ever after her knee surgery. Kim Terrell and Anne Marie Duke in our card on girl. A lot. A lot. And a lot is what she needed. Fast it's at my feet, almost tripped over myself. Now you can hear <clears> Carolyn just right. told us why she threw that shot bad. Fast. She got fast with her feet, and she two, almost three, fell four, over five. herself. Fast feet is deadly for any bowler. You could see here, yes. Late with the push away, see? Already oh sliding, God. and her ball's just coming down. Causes you to fall out of the shot. So she looks a lot better falling out of it than most people. Okay, so the one, two, eight. 
Very good, Carolyn. So right now a 28 pin lead for Marianne Garubo. She has three strikes in a row though. She can take it to 38 with a strike here. Just to remind everybody also how important the bonus pins are. Marianne won 18 matches, lost five and tied one. That's 18 times 30. That definitely helps your score and puts you in a better position in the top five. So winning matches is so, it really is a bonus. Good. She's playing the lanes correctly. Very nice. This was one thing we saw week two, Jan. The girls that wanted to play further right needed sometimes to move left, just like the girls playing in need sometimes to move right. What worked for one game obviously might not work for the next game. Okay, so she's working on four in a row. Trying to make it five in a right. Lucky just to leave the two pin on yes. that shot. Keep your feet low, for God's sake. You can hear Carolyn still talking to herself about those fans. Yes. Take a look at Marianne's shot. Beautiful timing, nice and low at the line. She really extends through at her release. She got that ball a little too far right. But because she stayed on her shot, she only left the two pin. We're in the midst of our Sunday live broadcast on ESPN, and there's three events coming up. On June 10th through the 15th will be the Pepsi Greater Rockford Open. That's the Cherry Bowl, the home of Rockford. Actually, the Collegiate will also be bowling a separate event. Just like that. Get one. Point in time. Um, but it'll be two telecasts, right. two separate telecasts. We move on from there to the Greater Cincinnati Open. That's in Erlinger, Kentucky, June 18th and 22nd. That broadcast on the 22nd. And then finally, Greater Harrisburg Open. That's at ABC West Lanes in Mechanicsburg, PA. Be televised on June 29th at 1 Eastern. Carolyn be it live on ESPN. All right, come on. Carolyn made a better show on 20, but just didn't carry the 10 pin. Come on, she's really focusing on keeping those feet slow. She trails by 38 pins right now, and I'll take just a minute to explain. Last year in Rockford, the Collegians bowled with the pros in a doubles format. This year, so that the NCAA Let's bowlers will be steps. eligible to compete. It'll be two separate events, but they'll be bowling side by side on the pairs together. With our tele, um, our telecast, the pro, the Pepsi, uh, televised Sunday. The Collegian televised later on. Oh. There's that dreaded two, four, five again. Okay. I think this shot she threw a lot better, but she's forcing it a little bit. She really pulled up on that just a little bit, forced the ball to go too far right, and once again the two, four, five spare. Hope I make it. What's your thought? I think she probably should have gotten a stronger ball and tried in where Marianne was playing because Carolyn played far in most of the week like everybody else. And I think that probably would have been a, a good move to try a ball further in where Marianne is just to see. Oh, a solid eight pin. But then again, Jan, she shot 235. Why change anything? She did, and that's what makes it difficult. And we often get questions like that. How do you decide when you need to change and how fast you need to make that change? And that's what's tough. Those that can make it the fastest are the ones that win the titles and make the shows. Yes. that solid eight because she leads by 40 pins going into the 10th frame. She just needs to knock down some pins here. 
Well, Marianne made a lot of adjustments with her eyes, moving her eyes back and forth on the lane, moving her ball up and down in her stance to change the speed of her ball. Little things like that make the biggest difference. It's not always try six different balls. Sometimes it's just your physical. It's all the tricks you have in your bag. You have to have a lot of tricks. Well, she missed the head pin on that shot. I wonder, do you think she was trying something else or it was just a bad shot? I think it was just a bad shot. I don't think she needs to try anything else. She has a good game, but her shot may be changing also, so it'll be very interesting to see for the next match. You want me to the ball? Carolyn Dorn Ballard. When we come back, you'll hear about some special moments right after this. On Monday night, ESPN brings you the LPGA Conagra Food Skins game. Laura Davies, Laura Diaz, Annika Sorenstam, and Kari Webb go head to head for $600,000 in prize money amidst the beautiful backdrop of the Wailea Golf Resort on the island of Maui in sunny Hawaii. ESPN coverage starts Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And our coverage of the semifinal match is just about to begin here at the Greater Terre Haute Open. Marianne DeRupa will start this match against Lisa Bishop. She defeated Carolyn 222 to 172. speaking to her ball I need help I spoke to her after she just won that last game and I said what do you think out there do you think that left lane is hooking more than the right she said no I just threw bad shots but I'm in my comfort zone and I'm just gonna keep moving left and going to stronger equipment so she has a game plan which is important yes because that allows you to make confident shots when yes. you have your game plan in place Lisa Bishop now, as we said, just missing out on that U.S. Open telecast last week. 32 years old, seven years on tour. Push a little, carry. Ten pin. Nice shot, carry. Carry definitely looks tough out there right now. One of our better opening shots, my player. Lisa is primarily a straight player. She played that deep all week. And some rounds she outscored everybody. So don't think just because you're a straight player that you can't ever play deep and get your ball to hit and hold good scores because this lady proved that you can. Covers up the spare, so it's two of three shows. That's a good start for Lisa Bishop here. She came out, she was rookie of the year on tour, and she hasn't been, she hasn't won as many titles as one would have expected if or that she expected she'd win. And that, could always, so far. and that could always be mentally disappointing because she is so overly talented. Gotta go. Come on, baby. Yes. There we go. And that's a good shot to come back in the second frame. We'll look at how they, how they got to this position. Leaders by round Lisa Bishop started off strong in the beginning of the week. Well, you can see it was between Lisa and Tiffany. Either one of them was always our leader at some point, which they deserve to make the show. If you could always be on top throughout 42 games, you deserve to make TV. Good shot. Good shot right now. It'll be interesting to see because they're both playing the lanes the same and how the shot is going to change. Marion, once again, a four-step delivery, pushes her ball out on the first step. Nice knee bend at the release, but she really extends, but doesn't push her ball to the right. She doesn't tug it, she doesn't throw it to the right, she just extends nice and lets the ball do the work. Remember, these balls are expensive. Let them do the work. <laughs> we don't have to work so hard. They are getting more expensive, but comparative to other sports, it's still a, a reasonably price yes. sport. Yes. Not a good shot. That's all the way looking at six minutes. I still believe 19 is hooking more than 18, uh, 20. Everything looks good to there, but now she tugged that. 
And as I said before, when Didi was bowling, there is no hold in the middle. So if you make a shot like that, you have to be prepared to shoot at something. Push up the spare. Lisa took a different approach to match play this week and was happy about her match play performance. It's been going up for the last couple of weeks. She ended up 15 and 9. She approached it like qualifying mentally. Didn't look at whether she was going to win the match or not. Just got as many pins as possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little love tap. Some of the other top finishers in this event. Kendra Gaines, who will be actually defending next week in Rockford. She's sitting here doing our stats. Alina Alto, all the way from Finland, made both cuts so far. Nikki Giannoulias, we knew her on TV every week years ago. She's back out after having problems with her back. Amy Dillon, another up-and-coming star for the future of women's professional bowling. And Cheryl Lee. Come on, baby. Stay with so us. Stay down. going to pile in the three, six, nine, ten. And this is the opposite of the spare that Tish Johnson left last night that she chopped to miss a difficult spare. You watch here at Lisa's release right there. Look how early that ball came off her hand. And her arm swing wasn't straight. It went off to the right a little bit, which tells me she dropped that. Now, fortunately, it's a tough spare. Now flip. Now flip. She talked to the end game. She talked to the end That wasn't exactly how you like to get it. You can see she uses her strike ball to shoot the double wood spare. But actually perfectly yeah. hits it. But that is a luck of the draw spare, too. You have to really hit that at the right angle. Normally, you'd want to hit a little bit higher on that lead pin, but it was fortunate that you hit it as weak as yes. you did. A little high, leaving the four pin. Marianne is dead accurate on 20. Lisa, too, for that matter. It's 19 that both leads have not conquered yet. We'll just have to keep moving left. Marianne was laughing with us saying she was sitting on the ball return at some point this week on the right hand lane. Yes she was. That's where she, she was started. that deep. Mm -hmm. But we played the lanes the way the lanes are always how to play them. We can't play them always the way we'd like to. We have to play the lanes the way the lanes are telling you to and that's why these ladies are so good at what they do because they play the lanes the way they have to not the way they want to. So DeRupo now trailing by seven pins through four frames. Now let's see if she makes an adjustment on 19. Is that two, four, five? Well, she definitely moved left and her projection was much better to the right. Now she's got to figure out, do I slow up my ball speed or do I move back just a little bit right and stay more firm? I would opt to stay in and slow up the ball speed. Well, she has 48 appearances of experience to call on to make that decision right now. She's a great TV holder. Turn to Terre Haute on a sad note. Bowling recently recently lost one of its legends and friends. ABC and PBA Hall of Famer Don Johnson passed away unexpectedly in his Las Vegas home May 3rd at the age of 62. He was a 26-time pro titleist and was honored by Bowling Magazine as one of 20 greatest bowlers of the 20th centuries. His friends knew him as the Kokomo Kid in honor of his Indiana hometown. He was truly one of a kind, the kind we all wanted to keep forever. Bowling World extends its prayers and sympathies to his sons, Don Jr. and Scott, and daughter Amy, and the rest of their family. Push a little now. Pick it up. Don kept a great, great person and did a lot with charities and wheelchair bowling and everything else. Tremendous, a lot of fun, and we will sadly miss him. Lisa Bishop now up by 10 pins. Working on a strike, she can take it to 20. She had a great average on this TV pair, 238. 
nuts with three games. So she was consistent every game. Flip, flip, yes! Oh, a nice shot. Leaving the 10 pin and Kathy Lee's officials said the same thing as Marianne. Her ball speed was actually a strength for her this week. Yes, Lisa's another one who has tremendous ball speed, so when the lanes start to break down and hook, she never has a problem clearing the front. Great shot of Lisa's ball. She's been dead accurate also, but again, leaving the corner pin, as we said before, Carrie was very tough this week. But these two ladies found a way to do it more than anybody else. Lisa was second in average, qualified with 212.47. That's huge for having a lack of carry in a round or two. Marianne, 265 for a high game. Not a lot of high games this week. And there's the 710 again. Mary Ann talked to us about that, that she saw a lot of 710s this week. That was a physically a great shot. Timing looks good. The rotation on the ball is good. It didn't look any different from her previous strikes on the right lane. Dee Dee left it on that lane. Carolyn almost left it on that lane, so. Okay, so obviously disappointed, didn't get either pin. Always want to try to get the one. She obviously was attempting to get at least one pin on that shot. Right now she trails by 24 pins as she steps up in the seventh frame. She wanted to thank her caddy. She had. Um, Sarah Cox caddy for her, and Sarah has done that for several years mm -hmm. here. She's become a fine young lady. Wow. Looks like 19 is beginning to be a little bit tricky as she tried to move. Now she's coming up light. Definitely better projection like the last shot on 19. But now the ball's projecting too far right. As you can see, it goes way out to 10 and then doesn't come back quick enough, she leaves the bucket, which, again, isn't an easy spare. Switches to the plastic ball. And that's unusual with the, uh, with the sleeper behind, the double wood, to use a spare ball. You can see if you don't hit it dead on accurate, going straight at it, your ball most of the time will deflect, and you're gonna leave that back pin. Sometimes it's better to shoot that spare at a little bit more of an angle and go right at it. Pick, 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 pick. Big change right here, but coming up late, leaving the 2 8. Focus. And it looks like there's some transition going on. And, and they're both struggling right now at this point in time. This is where ball speed's going to come into play surface on your ball, whether you're going to choose a ball that has shine on it or a little more surface and move deeper or take a shinier ball and just soften up your ball speed. This is the transition we talk about every week and the girls are gonna have to make an adjustment. Nope, get back. Oh, she's not slow enough. enough. She thought she missed the next ball. And that ball took a left turn. This was Lisa's first shot on lane 20. You can see she's laying the ball down when it goes through the arrows around 21, 22. Good shot. Good shot. I'm up high there, leaving the 4 7. Oh, and it looks and then her second hand. shot on lane 20. You can see where it skids in that oil and it never recovers and only leaving the 2-8 chance. She almost had the 2-7-8, which would have been a more difficult spare to pick up. Lisa Bishop also uses the plastic ball. Another great spare shooter. We talked about that this is our eighth time returning to Terre Haute. You see Lisa Bishop up by 31 pins. There's champions in the past years that we've been here. Never a repeat champion. Lisa Bishop is the first one who 
Well, the only one tonight that has an opportunity to become the first repeat champion here. Another great shot by Marilyn Marlene 20. It's 20 is not the problem. If she could come from 19 and get herself a double, she'd be right back in this match. She trails right now by 31 pins. She can take it to 21 with a strike here, which would be a big setup in the ninth frame. She's cashed in all three events this year, but it's her first show. didn't overthrow it through the break point and allowed it to recover. That's exactly what she wanted. Back in the game. She is. Marianne could go off the sheet for a 201. Lisa Bishop will need to fill 20 in each of the next two frames. That seven count won't let her do it. So Lisa Bishop will now not be able to shut out Marianne Derupa. And I'm shocked that she went that high on lane 20 because 20 has been the more consistent lane. And I will correct, if, since she didn't fill 20 a frame, she would need to double in the 10th to shut out Marion DeRupo. Oh, boy. Again, she doubted making that spear. She had it. She's definitely not sure of what's that tells me she's unsure of what's going on on the lane because she doesn't know what a ball's going to do. What do you do when you get in that, in that situation? You do whatever's comfortable because comfort is key number one. If you're not loose and comfortable, you, you can't read your ball reaction. So she's got to get loose and comfortable. Make a good shot no matter what the result. She needed a double here to secure the match. Now she was saying that that was a good shot when she let it go and she was right. She kept it in a little bit. Well, it needed to project a little bit further right, but a very good shot for the first shot in the 10th. Came up just a little high, left the four seven, the seven pin fall. We saw a lot of four pins this week too. Easy spare for Lisa. She'll have a 198. As I said, Marianne Drupo could strike out for 201. I do believe Marianne has thrown two different balls. One ball on 20 and a different ball on 19. speed, good projection. She stayed down on her shot. It's hard to do that sometimes when you're under pressure. She did it. She got a big break. So Lisa Bishop will advance to the championship match as she defeated Marianne DeRubo. But first, when we return, one of your questions will be answered.
Welcome back to Terre Haute Bowling Center, where we just completed the semifinal match of the Greater Terre Haute Open. Lisa Bishop defeated Marianne DeRupo 198 to 180. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with Kathy Doran Lizzie. Coming up next, Lisa Bishop will battle it out against the 99 Rookie of the Year, Tiffany Stanbro. It'll be the championship match. Next week, the PWA goes home to the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois for the Pepsi Greater Rockford Classic. It'll be the 31st year that Rockford has hosted women's professional bowling. Tune in a half hour later at 1.30 p.m. Eastern next Sunday and enjoy Father's Day with the PWBA. Ready to go with the championship match. Lisa Bishop will start this match. Tiffany Stanbro made the decision, and it appears this way Tiffany will finish first. Taking the pressure off herself, maybe? Oh, absolutely. I would always choose to finish first. But if she two has ball. a better shot on the lane that she wants to finish on, that always comes into ball. play, too. Yeah, two different I spoke to Lisa Bishop after she won that last match against Mary, and she's switching across. A push. Feels the right lane is hooking more, which is that's what I believe. And that lane 20 has a little bit of a hang spot, which what we mean by that is there's a little push. There's a little more oil in one area that's allowing their ball to still push to the right. So she's going to work with her ball speed and switch balls. 25 years old, 50 year on tour, and she has those two national titles crossing over, leaving a four pin. And speaking of ball speed, Tiffany doesn't have a lack thereof. <laughs> no, and she bowls very quickly as well, but she has slowed herself down just a little bit and settles herself before her shots. And she just covers that four pin. If you would like to ask a question, go ahead and go to pwba.com and click on the bowlersparadise.com Ask the Pro button. Send in your question, and if it's answered on air, you will receive a gift. Patricia this week received an Ebonite Apex addiction, addition, excuse me, addiction from bowlersparadise.com and a $50 shopping spree from pwba.com. So it's beneficial to write in. Yes, it is. And we'd love to answer some of your questions. Tiffany just answered this match with a strike great shot. And you can see the power behind her ball, the way she just lets the pins fly around. Not only does she have ball speed, but she gets a nice revolution on her ball. A lot of talent in that young lady. Right. Or just one? Did she tell you what she was going to do then? She just said she was going to try another ball, but this was not a good shot from the get-go. You can see right here, she cut that short. That was left off her hand. She leaves the 3-6. I can see why she's cutting it short, because the right lane is tighter. So it forces you to get the ball into an earlier roll so it doesn't slide but then you have to still extend so you don't cut it short. That's why the scores were lower this week. She defeated Tiffany in match play this week. And she's 1-0 lifetime against her on television. if she strikes here. <laughs> Seven pin. We saw Dee Dee Davidson leave a lot of those. I'm going to take a minute and remind you we will go straight through the championship match with no breaks in order to bring you uninterrupted coverage. That was a beautiful shot by Tiffany. You could hear her fingers pop from her grips. That's how hard she flips out of it. Oh, no. Uh, you heard it. Oh, right. no, it's right. <laughs> that wasn't very good. She missed that spare by a mile. That's nerves. Because she didn't miss many spares all week. So that's nerves.
You can see her arm was left at the release. And because it's a plastic ball, that's where it's going to go. Okay, let's see if she can keep from that right here. Five, four, seven, ten. Big split, and she's going for her third career title here. Well, it looked pretty good. She probably got it a hair right. And like I said before, for the righties and the lefties, there's not enough hold in the middle of the lane to keep your ball from disaster. This is makeable. She takes two, leaving two on the lane, and Lisa Bishop will step up, and we'll see if we see any pressure in Lisa, because she hasn't won a title since 2000. So it's been three years for Lisa Bishop without a title. Right now, she leads. She could strike all the way out for 280. Tiffany Stambro, 236 is the best she can do. You gotta be right. You gotta be softer with the arm. And you heard her. You gotta get it right, but you gotta be softer with the arm. Come on. She's playing what's not her comfort zone. Exactly. This was a better physical shot. She didn't, the ball didn't go left off her hand at the release, but she didn't project far enough through the front to get it to the right. That's why it keeps coming Tip it, pop. tip it. This is the three pin, so new life for Tiffany Stanbro. She's adjusting her wristband, though. She's cupping her wrist and flattening her wrist. She's changing her hand positions with the device that she's wearing on her wrist. When she wants the ball to roll more, she'll cup it down. When she wants to flatten the ball out, she'll bring it back up in a straighter position. And now up by 12 pins. One, two, eight, ten. And what has just happened? Watch out. Well, everybody keeps making their high mistakes on lane 19. I think her idea was right. She projected the ball to the right. But she probably didn't hit it the way she should have. She didn't put enough roll on it. Kick it! Yes! Thanks, girl. Open up the textbook, and you'll see that. Elisa, another great spare shooter, takes her plastic ball, gets to the left of the one-two. But you have to have it dead on because we have the eight pin back there, and the head pin gets the ten pin. Great spare to keep herself safe. Come on, roll! Come on. pin, and she Who's was that? hoping to carry that one. Much better shot by Tiffany. She's down by just 12 pins. She wanted to make sure, she wanted to wish her friend Pam O'Dell well. Her uh, friend is ill, and she wants to let her know she's thinking about her. It's and her tough out here, Kathy. Yes, it is. Family yeah. and friends are having problems at home, and you can't be there. Easy spin. Much better shot by Tiffany. You can see the power. That head pin is nowhere to be found once her ball hits it. And how the 10 pin stood, I don't know, because that definitely was a strike shot. Well, Tiffany should have confidence. She has a great support system in her mom and her dad, Roy and Beverly, and her uncle Bob. Very supportive. They come out to watch her whenever they can. everything they can to conquer 19. Lane 19 has not been good all day. Lisa Bishop, 300 this week, the lone 300 of the tournament. God bless her, I don't know how she did it. Is that enough? Nope. Kick it. Come on, yeah! <laughs> Lovely timber. What lane change we those have Those are the today? shots you need to get ahead. You gotta trip those fours. She comes up a little high, but a much better shot than the previous frame. The four pin goes to the right. And then finally down to oh, for no. the strike. That'll loosen her up a little bit. But let's see what she does on 19. Push Looks a little, good. push a little. Oh, she got robbed. That was a great shot. So 
so, so four seven. Tricky. Lisa took an interesting approach this year to her goals. Instead of setting what she wanted to win, she set a goal to average higher. She's typically been 204 to 206 on tour. Wants to be more in the 210 to 12 range. And to tell you how she's doing so far through two events, she's at 219. So, uh, so far successful at that point. Well, and I liked what she said about it. She's I'm in control. I'm in control. I'm going to average ESPN brings you the LPPA Conagra Food Skins game. Laura Davies, Laura Diaz, Annika Sorenstam, and Holly Webb go head to head for $600,000 in prize money amidst the beautiful backdrop of the Wailea Golf Resort on the island of Maui in sunny Hawaii. That coverage starts Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern. Yeah! And Tiffany started very quickly in that game. Shows on that one, Jan, because I love to see her pumped up. She's so enthusiastic and she's so powerful. I don't think she really knows what she's capable of. Well, now she just trails by two pins. If she would throw another strike here, Kathy, we'd have a lead change, and Tiffany would have the lead in this match for the first time. Jan, what do you think? Is it more nerve-wracking to be in the lead or to have to come back? For me, it was more nerve-wracking being in the lead, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. yeah! Yeah! <laughs> She's screaming those kinds yeah. of yeah. things. Yeah. Two perfect shots. You can see her release, how she flips out of it. Great ball roll. Look at the power on that roll. She trips the six pin. Those are the breaks you need to put the strikes together. She won that one, so she now leads eight pins. Get it, yeah! Come on! Let's make it a ballgame. We have two extremely competitive ladies here. Come on. Another perfect shot by Lisa. Coming up light, like we said, maybe light is better. Taps the four pin out. For what should be a three bagger, but it's only a strike. She trails by eight. One of our first titles since 2000 and looking to be the first repeat champion here in Terre Haute. Gotta go. Gotta flip. She called it. Love Needed her it shot. to flip. 210. She leaves the two, 210. She's going to have to go for this, Kathy. She's going to have to go for it, and she will. But it went too far to the right. She said 19 has been very unforgiving. She leaves the 210, which is a very makeable split. She'll throw her plastic ball to the left side of the two pin, and hopefully slide it into the 10. Come on, come on! Yeah! a fighter you couldn't have done it better than that picture perfect taps it right from the two pin over to the ten that's why plastic balls are so important they go where you throw them hey but tiffany can increase her lead with one more strike and it's not going to be roll. leaving Mom. two pin okay you heard her let it roll she's getting a little quick She's, she's trying to force the ball instead of letting the ball do the work. But that's nerves. That's anxiety. She's human. That's that's okay. She was lucky to leave only the two pin. She leads by seven if she spares this up, and she will enter the tenth frame with a chance to close out this victory with a double. Lisa Bishop can only wait to see if she'll have an opportunity. Now, if everybody could remember, before, Tiffany right? had to double to win her other title, right? and she stepped up to the plate and did it. Right? Well, her strength was her carry. Her weakness was her focus. Let's see if she can get the focus well, she needs for these shots. Did I, did I the again she has to be thinking about it I'm sure you draw you draw on your experience 
She needs this strike and then she'll need four pins. First things first. this one but look at the control at the release the rotation how she kept that ball on line she, what a great shot to win the tournament she needs four pins stay behind yeah. the line keep it on the lane yeah. and that's enough so Tiffany Stanley picks up early this year where she left off last season by winning her third career title with us. We'll be right back. Okay. Woo. Tiffany Stanbro wins the Greater Terre Haute Open by a score of 205 to 186. How many wins is this for you? Three. Three? All right. So it's still a little fresh. Yeah. Very. Not bad week to She it. receives her awards from Rick Braden, the bowling center manager here at Terre Haute Bowling Center. And Dave Patterson, the executive director of the Terre Haute Convention and Visitors oh, Bureau. So, so <laughs> Tiffany Stamber wins her third career title and sends a message to the veterans. Tune in next Sunday, a half hour later at 1.30 Eastern for the Pepsi Greater Rockford Classic from the home of the PWBA, the Cherry Bowl in Rockford, Illinois. For Until next week, stay safe.